All right, so today I just packed for New York and it's the lightest camera kit I think I've packed in a decade. It's less than 17 pounds. Uh, going to New York on more of a family trip, but I still wanna be able to do some long exposures and some cool images in Manhattan. And so I'm gonna take you through what made the cut. Well, hey everyone, welcome to this week's video. I swear, this is the smallest I have and lightest I've packed for a trip getting on a plane with any kind of camera gear in a really long time. It's kind of exciting. Uh, it's keeping my wife and kids happy that we're not toting so much stuff through Manhattan and using public transportation. Uh, and it's gonna make it a breeze to fly with because it can just tuck under the seat. Um, so I'm gonna go through everything in here. A Couple quick announcements first. Uh, I want to uh, invite everyone, July 6th, all the Nikon folks. This is one that's going to be particularly pertinent to the Nikon users or Nikon curious. Um, these office hours are a group collaboration of photographers where we all get together and talk about all things photographic. Take your questions, sometimes go through review your, your images as a community. Um, and there are so many questions about Nikon and mirrorless and the state of the industry and using the cameras. And you know, because we have people that shoot all different brands, we try to kind of put a few of those questions, the best ones to the end, but there's a whole pile up of questions. Uh, and so we thought, you know, let's just do one for the Nikon faithful. A lot of people, you know, look to me for Nikon advice. Um, so if you're not a Nikon shooter, take that office hours off uh, July 6th. Just do a long weekend from the 4th of July. It's going to be 10 a.m. Pacific, July 6th. Sign up at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. Um, and everything I talk about in here is in my links at hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links. Those links help me out, and I appreciate your using them, and I appreciate everyone supporting this channel growing this channel, sharing, subscribing, liking the videos. It makes a huge difference and just thank you. Um, so I'm packing for New York. I'm getting on a plane Friday. You know, I'll actually, well, this video is gonna go out while I'm in New York. So I'm already there. So, you know, uh, hopefully I'll come up with some content to share with you all. Um, and I thought, you know, we talked about how much gear was gonna go. That's always a, a, a note of discussion. We're not taking kiteboarding gear. We're not taking biking gear. Um, and it's mainly a family trip. My birthday, we're gonna kind of celebrate that with the kiddos in Manhattan, and then we're going out to Long Island to Stacy's family. I'm gonna uh, meet, meet some people at B&H, and there's not a whole lot of photo stuff. It's, it's more family. But I still, I'm testing some new filters, and I wanna be able to do a little work, and I love photographing Manhattan, so I thought, you know, how do I pare this down? Well, so first off, I've got the Everyday Sling Bag from Peak Design. You know, I have not been a giant fan of Peak Design's bags, and I think a lot of people know that over the years, but I really like this Everyday Sling Bag. I think it's nearly perfect for a lightweight, mirrorless kit out and about town. I like the way that it's got this removable little sling for a lighter weight tripod, like my kind of ultra lightweight um, pan and tilt Leo Photo built-in leveling head that's in my links. Um, and there's this little sling strap that's really just clips on, super easy to remove. You can also just clip it off and grab your tripod off of it. Lickety split. So I've got my little four pound system with the Acrotac pan and tilt head. I've got my stone bag kind of wrapped up in the middle of it. I've got my Leo Photo TFS, the, the spikes with the removable nice caps for working in the city or a museum or something. Um, really gives me a little extra height with this tripod along with, uh, with being usable on the beaches. We'll definitely spend a little time at the beach. And everything that I have in here, I'm not gonna be carrying around with me all the time by any stretch of the imagination, but it's all the photo stuff. So I will be sticking it on the plane. I got the LRP3 nodal rail that I'll clamp into that uh, head to get leveled out over it, balanced, do panoramas. Um, I've got some cleaning cloths. I always carry a bunch of clean uh, cleaning cloths and residual oil remover just for cleaning lenses, filters, whatever needs it if there's really stuck on gunk. I've got my new little Really Right Stuff PG01 nodal uh, advanced panorama setup for multi-row or tilted panos. I talked about that a couple weeks ago. I'll put that video in the description. At the end, I'm also gonna show you a little trick that I found uh, for marking 
the place that you want to put this together. I'll talk about that at the end. If I forget, people will holler at me. But I've got a nice little bag for that. It's actually a padded bag that my original uh, DJI Mavic, which I no longer have, came in, but it fits that nicely and it's padded. So that way it keeps it from scratching anything in here. I always have my quick release Luma Labs QR strap, um, my favorite camera strap, which just clicks right into the L brackets from Kirk. I've got one Nikon ENAL 15 battery charger. I've got a rocket blower. Always have a rocket blower for dust on the sensor or dust and stuff on the lenses. I've got a whole box of case filters that I'm testing out. They're Wolverine 82 millimeter magnetic. This is a stack cap set with a three, six and 10 stop neutral density filter. I've got a cap and an adapter to my 72 millimeter lens that's a magnetic adapter with a circular polarizer on it. That's kind of my everyday knock around that 14 or 24 to 70. And then I've got uh, a couple other adapters just to be able to adapt it to any of the lenses I have in my kit along with a UV and a neutral night filter in case I do any night photography. Um, so that all fits right there. They're so thin, all the adapter rings and filters and multiple caps all fit in my little mind shift filter nest. I've got my Z7 II with the 24 to 70 on it. Likely most of the time I'll just be knocking around with that stuff in my bag. Very light, very easy to sling. Um, so got the camera, got its eye cup and hood built in. I got my filters. This bag has these neat little kind of pedaled compartments. I've got my 14 to 30 F4. This trip's gonna be the test of whether I sell this because I have the, the 14 to 24. And this was a tough call for me. Bring this, bring this or bring the 14 to 24, but the 14 to 24 is bigger, requires me to bring bigger filters if I wanna use them. This fits 82 millimeter. So I haven't quite sold it yet. So maybe I'll be keeping it, we'll see. It's a great lightweight, little sharp 14 to 30. I've got my 50 millimeter 1.8, one of my favorite lenses ever. And the choice was between this and the 70 to 200, believe it or not. You know, I'm not gonna be shooting wildlife. I'm not out there searching for extractive landscapes. It's more city and street stuff that the 24 to 70 and the 14 to 30 is gonna be better for us. Maybe some long exposures of the skyline, that kind of thing. The 50 with the 1.8 will let me do blurred backgrounds, get portraits of people and my family and the kids and things like that. And I can move my feet to zoom. It works in low light. So it kind of is my low light and blurred background weapon that I'm bringing on this. So the three of these together really are a nice, small little trio. That's it for optics. Um, I've got two spare batteries. I find this camera sips batteries, especially in viewfinder priority mode. I don't have any problem getting by with three batteries on this whole trip, I'm sure. I've got that one charger. That's it for the interior of that bag. The little front pocket. I have a couple of goodies. I have a box with Compact Flash Express and XQD cards, plenty of gigabytes in there. Um, I also have a little 5,000 milliamp power delivery anchor battery. I have these in my links along with a high output anchor um, USB-C cable. So I can actually charge the camera while it's in the bag or run it all night if I was doing night work, just running it straight off this power delivery port on this little battery. And that chain thing recharges, you know, in a couple hours during the day. So really this equals another maybe three batteries because the camera runs off of it. And that, my friends, is basically all that I intend to take on this trip. The great news is, you know, I'll put this in our check duffel along with the kids' clothes and our little stuff sacks of clothes. It's gonna be warm in New York, so we don't need that much. Uh, and this can just tuck under the seat. This will be my personal item. I'll have my laptop bag with some hard drives so that I can back stuff up. And this could be my personal item carried in my hand and tuck under the seat, believe it or not. So everything fits in there. I'm excited about this trip. It's the first time getting back to New York since the pandemic. I know they've just opened things up, so it's gonna be an interesting time there. I love the city. I am so excited. My kids are big enough to run around and play in Central Park and marvel at the size of the city. Um, and so it's gonna be a ton of fun. I'll be doing it while you watch this. Um, the last thing I promised I'd talk about 
Um, I had some people questioning, you know, well, it's a pain to have to set up and, and find the center point every time you use this PG01 um, really right stuff advanced panorama system. So I'm going to just move this stuff over really quick and I'm going to set up my little uh, set of legs I'm taking on this trip with me fast, just flat so that we can, I can really walk you through how I'll do this. Yeah, I got to get my, I got to get this out of here anyway. Hang on a sec. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So there we go. Put this flat down. One of the things I love about not having a center column is the ability to do that. And we'll, uh, we'll just lift this guy up. So if you're assembling this, we talked about the fact, you know, you open the lever clamp and there's a whole video about this, I'm linking in the video's description. You put the zero marker against the zero marker, your clamp, boom, I've got that Acrotec lever that I just adore. Get this guy set up vertical, you know, it's gonna be somewhere in the ballpark, right? You're just kind of guesstimating at it because you haven't got it totally dialed in. You bring this guy around, I've got my leveling adapter knob back here out of sight from you all, but it's on the side of my, uh, tripods integrated leveling adapter. Boop, there it is. You're gonna drop your nodal rail of choice. I like the LRP3 because it's adjustable and it works for any lens and camera combination without getting in the frame. And you put your camera in and you're gonna watch your live view. You can flip the screen up to help with that. You're gonna get perfectly centered and you basically get it so that you're centered up over this knob. We talked about how to do that. I showcased how you do it in a video last week, actually. I'll, I'll link that video in this video's description. If you just click the video's title or show more, you'll find a chaptered out table of contents with clickable time links for all the stuff that I'm talking about here, along with links to the products that I'm talking about, along with a link to this very video about how to do this in more detail. The key that I'm going to say is that once you've got a look at you pull your lens cap off, I already did. I can see, you have to zoom out a little bit. Let me pull the hood off. You know, whoop, you're gonna, you're gonna tilt a little left and right to get centered up and then slide forward and aft until you're dead center over that. Yeah, right there, dead center over this lock ring and circle that's it's really easy to see when you're dead center when you move it it won't move in the frame when you rotate like that and then what i'm going to argue you should have is one of these pen touch silver paint pens this is what i sign prints with i sign prints that come off my big epson 9900 or i sign metal prints i have made with ba photo this is like a, a permanent paint pen you get the extra fine version and once you've got this in the position you want just Get a little bit of alcohol and a paper towel sitting next to you and draw a line zoop, right up where that meets on each side. Zoop, so you've got it marked. And then you're going to take your camera out. You're going to pull this off and you can just wipe the spot where you get paint on this vertical rail and you leave it on the horizontal rail. And it makes it really easy to see those two marks, center it between them torque it down. You don't have to measure it anymore. You're locked in. You know right where to put this every time you set it up. So that's a good key for using the PG-01. Um, thanks to everybody who sent in questions and comments about that. I know a number of you've gotten them. I know they're, they're kind of a, a newer product. They're popular, so they're back, back ordered a bit like so many things are today. Um, but, uh, but just put that order in through B&H, you should be able to get them. There's, I'll put a link to this again in the video's description. I love the fact that it's a pound and it's so rock solid. Um, so, all right, everybody. I, uh, I hopefully am having a fantastic time in New York while you watch this. I hope all of you are having a good creative summer for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, it's getting into winter for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, but I hope it's beautiful. I love winter. Um, so the key is being creative, staying safe, staying healthy. Uh, and so, uh, once again, I hope you'll join the office hours if you're Nikon folks and send me questions when you sign up at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week.